Welcome to this comprehensive tutorial. I'm just going to guide you through some of the main features and functions that we can take advantage of in a design process. So I'm just going to showcase it through a car design related example. And if you want to follow along with the same examples, you can find all the sketches I've used in this video down below at the description. I just created a new file and I dropped in some sketches on this infinite canvas view and I'm going to go over some exterior, interior examples and some more standalone component designs as well. So let's start with exterior. You can just double click on any of these uploaded images and that will open up this more detailed drawing studio. For this entire workflow, I'm going to be using keyboard shortcuts with Viscom that you can find under the question mark. I wanted to show that I started with a pretty rough sketch here, but I cleaned it up because I wanted to have a bit more precise renderings in the process. And with this more refined sketch, I can just transition over to the create tab, what you can find on the right tab. And I just put in a basic prompt description of a futuristic off-road silver concept vehicle. And I selected the automotive exterior style here. And by selecting 100% drawing influence, it's going to mean that it is forcing the generated renderings on top of your line drawing exactly and as much as possible. And as you start lowering down on this drawing influence, let's drop it down to like 50%, you're essentially leaving it more freedom to interpret your lines and you can end up with much nicer, more realistic surfaces. Especially in this automotive exterior style, you can go as low as like 40% even, and it will still sort of stick to your original main proportions and graphics. So you, you can just click through some of these preview images and you can add some of these to the canvas, or actually you can add this to your layers tab, and when you click on cancel, it will appear on your canvas. But Viscom is always going to generate according to what is displayed on the canvas. So if you want to keep generating on top of the sketch input, you have to hide the visible renderings. Here I just wanted to showcase that you can also generate images without any drawing influence. So using 0% is going to mean that it will not consider your sketch at all. It will just rely on the prompt description. So I just wanted to showcase this logic behind generating images and using the drawing influence to force it on your sketch. Now if there is a certain visual in your mind or if you have an inspiration image or a feeling that you want to get across, you can find this option on the right tab and you can open up this reference image console where you can start uploading your inspiration images. It is always going to generate according to one image that you're selecting and I can just click on to set the influence of this, this image and I'm going to use 50% drawing influence or 45 to allow it freedom for essentially transferring this design language and have some sort of ideation according to this product design inspiration image. So as we can see here, it translated this sort of design language and the colors and the actual uh, mood of that image, but I was still using the automotive exterior style, which is going to give me these more design sketch-like aesthetics. And I have a nice base rendering that I can develop further. So I click on add and I select the in painting tool after I created a new layer. And I'm just going to select the entire underbody and the wheels of this vehicle. You can also hold down shift for multiple areas that you want to select. And then you can specifically describe that area. I'm going to say these are off-road tires here. But since I want to have more realistic wheels, this automotive exterior has a very nice light design sketch style. But if I want to aim for a more realistic visualization, I can just also switch to Viscom General, which is the more photorealistic style. And by masking only the wheels and naming them, you can just generate a realistic set of underbody and wheels under the vehicle. But at the same time, you're still maintaining that very light and fluid design sketch like body of the car. And that's quite okay. I can just add this to the canvas. I will start defining the front fascia of the vehicle a bit more. So I just catch in some uh, vents here and some headlight graphics. And here I would introduce the refine feature and I'm selecting only the front part of this vehicle. So instead of creating an entirely new rendering on these lines, now I'm transitioning over to the refine, which is going to keep the colors, keep the main elements and aesthetics, 
and it will just slightly morph it into something which is more realistic meaning that it will just nicely implement everything into the overall aesthetic and the actual drawing influence is going to determine how much variation and how much more realistic it will be and if i click on add and cancel this process this uh, the layer on top is the refined version and if i click on generate once again it is going to refine on top of an already refined image so I can get it even more realistic and I can introduce even more variation here. So we can just generate on top of an already refined image as, as many times as we want. And I can just display here the difference between the previously refined and this one. And I can just click on add if I'm satisfied. And don't worry if you forgot to add any of the renderings, they will not be lost. You can always restore them from the history tab, which is located at the left bottom corner and browse through these previously generated renderings. And you can add any of these renderings from here back to your layers tab. And by clicking on apply settings, you can just restore the way how you generated a certain result. Now if I'm ready with this proposal, I can just export it as a PNG image or a Photoshop file as well, if I want to carry over all the layers. Now there is also a new option to export your file as a video, which is going to morph together all the created layers, making the documentation process much more fun and more seamless. And if you're done with this process, we can just click on the X icon to go back outside to the infinite canvas view. And here I can also just attach a prompt box to the image and I can create alternative visuals on this as an input material for the renderings. I'm just going to paste in the same prompt description that I've used before and I'm just going to select different render styles that I haven't showcased yet. You can just explore a lot of these different visuals with the help of the render styles and you can also modify the drawing influence but here I kept it at 100% because I just wanted to have alternative visuals on this finalized design. So after we got familiar with the main interface tools, I'm just going to show an alternative exploration process with a more high level proposal on this interior sketch here. So I want to just explore the sketch by using the automotive interior, which can be suitable for rendering out these very immersive spaces and spatial sketches like this. And I'm going to just describe it as a premium uh, white leather and wood interior concept of some sort. And here the key is that you can just keep clicking on generate as many times as you want. And at the same time, you can also modify the drawing influence and real time generate according to the setting that you just set. And this way you can just entirely explore the potential of a sketch because you can explore something which is a more strict visual, but at the same time, you can also generate diverse visuals and diverse variations utilizing lower drawing influence percentages. You can also click on this three dot and duplicate the prompt box in order to have an alternative description. But here I described green and gold Art Deco inspired interior and we can see that it just completely modified and transformed the spatial experience of this interior concept. And now if I want, I can just double click on any of these preferred proposals and I can start modifying on the details. For instance, I can just modify this middle console part here by selecting it with the in painting tool and providing an alternative prompt description and we can use the drawing influence slider to, to determine the diversity of the exploration and then we can just generate alternative ideas there. And this way I can just ideate in a more in-depth way in this drawing application view but at the same time I can still explore the high level concepts outside at the workbench infinite canvas view. When it comes to separate elements or component designs, we might want to visualize them in a very isolated and standalone way. And to do that, I'm just going to double click on this image and open up this drawing view. And the trick here is that I'm going to use the in painting selection tool right on the input material, which is the sketch here. I'm just going to create a rough selection around this sketch. And this way I'm going to force the created renderings within the sketch lines. And here I'm going to use the Viscom General for a more photorealistic result. And I'm just going to provide a quick prompt description and generate a few renderings here. Here the tactic is that I'm going to generate an underlay rendering first. 
and then after that I can also work on the details getting back to the sketch. If I aimed that area as a display, I can just go back to the sketch phase and I can select that area in an isolated way and I can provide it a from description as such as a digital uh, blue translucent digital display there. And this way I have this isolated rendering that I can add to the canvas, but I can put it under the previous rendering, the more uh, detailed high level rendering and I can use the eraser tool to just simply reveal the previously generated blue translucent display and this way I can just mix and match together different renderings from different styles even uh, with the help of the layer structure and then of course I can just display the sketch on top with the multiply blending option to create this nice uh, design sketch like visual. So the other component design example will be about that you can also bring in your own 3D models into Wiscom and you can generate visualizations on top of them. So let's just click on this insert button and here you can insert an image or a 3D model. I'm just going to use one of my previously modeled seat here that I already uploaded. And now I can just rotate this on the canvas and I can put it in a desired position. And I can also just click on this layer and say duplicate in order to have a different view on the same canvas. And I can just rotate this at a different position. Alternatively, I can also just switch to this different viewport of mesh. Since I don't have any textures on this, I'm just going to use this raw mesh format here. And similarly, I'm just going to select them with the inpainting tool and use using the Viscom General, making sure that it will be photorealistic. And Viscom will be clever enough to recognize that you probably want to render out the same object just from different views. And this way we can make sure that these are photorealistic views of the same seat. And after that, we can just export it out as a PNG, for example, and we can go back to the infinite canvas view. With Viscom, a brand new way of thinking about the workflow just opened up for us with the 3D model generation process. So we can just take a side view sketch like this. Let's just simply describe it and try to ideate with different styles and with different drawing influences I just want to find an interesting interpretation of this side view image that later I can create a 3D model of. So I just laid out some of these different um, ideations on this side view. And I can just double click on any of these images. And now what I can do is there is this brand new generate 3D icon at the top toolbar. And if I click on it, I just have to give it a few seconds and the 3D model is going to be loading in. And we can start rotating it around, setting different views for it. We can switch between the raw mesh and the applied image texture view. I'm just going to position it on top of this side view just to compare it how it constructed the 3D model. And now let's just set different views and let's uh, turn off the original layer there. I'm just going to quickly put in a white background because I will want to have a white background with the created renderings in order to only focus on the shape itself. So I'm just going to duplicate this 3D model and rotate in alternative positions. And if I set up some alternative positions here, I can use the refine feature, which is going to keep the main colors and the main graphical elements. So it will just make a smoother visualizations out of what we have here on the canvas. And so we can utilize this refining effect to just make a nicer impression of this model. And I have this back view here or rear three quarter perspective. I can add this to the canvas. I can switch to the front view and do the same action. And this way each view is going to stay true to the original 3D model that had been originated from the actual side view sketch that we did. So we can just carry over the main graphics and main elements and still have different views laid out. 
and I'm just going to add these to the canvas. And what I can do, if I click on one of these generated image layers, I can duplicate these into the workbench. And I'm going to duplicate all of these to the workbench in order to work on them separately or just to have these laid out as a workflow element in the infinite canvas. And if I exit out, I can just check out the views that I put here. So with the help of this workflow, I only had to sketch out a side view and I was able to rotate around thanks to a rendering and a generated 3D model. And I could also refine on top of this 3D model. And if I want, I can start developing the details of each view, just like how I did with this front mask here. So that's what I wanted to showcase here. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to see how the entire workflow is going to be influenced by this feature. And this would be a comprehensive tutorial of the current capabilities of Fiscom. I hope it was helpful and let me know if you have any questions.